So I have written a binary number on the screen. I've noticed uh, sometimes we'll write the base down there just so we know what base we're working in. But I'm just going to tell you it's binary. It's base 2. And I want you to convert this to hexadecimal. So how would you do that? Pause the video and actually try to do that. Pull out a piece of paper, work it out on the pad. Knowing the tricks that I've taught you up to this point, what technique would you use to convert this binary number to a hexadecimal number? Pause the video, do it. Okay, a naive approach would be, let's go to decimal. So this is the ones, this is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, uh, sorry, <laughs> my brain stopped there for a sec, 64, 128, so we have 1, 128, we have 1, 32, we have 1, 16, we have 1, 8, and 1, 2, so add all these ups, looks like 10 plus 10 is 26, so 26, 2 plus 2 is 4, 5, 8, and then 186. So there we go, 186. And then how would I convert that to hexadecimal? Well, I haven't shown you how to convert a decimal number to hexadecimal, but I have shown you how to convert a decimal number to binary, and, and the idea is still the same as what we did with binary. Maybe you came up with that. And if you did, I applaud you. But remember, the digits for hexadecimal are... 1, 16, 2, 56, 4, 0, 9, 6, and we can just keep going every time we multiply by another 16. But this is plenty for what we're about to do. So you could say, well, if I had to make change to you, right, and, uh, and we had hexadecimal dollar bills, and then I had to make change to you for $186. And this is decimal, right? Maybe I will write the base down here, base 10. And I only had these denominations of bills to give you. Well, I wouldn't hand you a $4,096 or $4,096 bill. It's, you'd come to my restaurant, like I said before, you'd come to my restaurant often. Nor would I give you a $256 bill, but I could break this up by 16. So how many 16s go into 186? Well, we can do the longhand way of doing math that I've learned in... And I believe it's was third grade. I remember Miss Miss Wardrop, if I remember, she would teach me how to do this. 16 into 186. Or maybe it was Miss Shumway. I can't remember. Okay, 16 goes into 18 once. Right, and then we got 26. And then 16 goes into 26 once. Right, and then that leaves us with 10. So 11 remainder uh, 10. So I would give you 11... $16 bills, and then I'd have to give you 10 $1 bills. Well, so so go into hex. Using using our technique we used for, to go to binary, let's go to hex. Um, 11, what is 11 in, in hex? Well, I told you A, B, C, D, E, F. It's B. So to convert this number uh, into hex going through decimal, then we go B, and then remainder 10. Well, what's What's 10 in hex? That's going to be A. All right, now that's a whew, that's a long way about going through this, but you could. And if you came up with that, I do actually applaud you. That was very good work on your part. Um, but that's kind of a headache, all right? I had to go to decimal, something, a base that I'm used to. And the only reason I went to decimal is because I'm used to that, all right? And then I used that decimal value to break it up into base 16, and I got BA and... I'm feeling pretty good, but oh man, what a headache. And let's not do stuff that we're used to. Let's think like computer scientists and think like computers, all right? That's the whole point of making these videos is so that we can think like computer scientists. 16 is a multiple of 2. Did we not see that in the last video? And I counted all the way down using hex, and I counted all the way down using binary. And do you remember what, uh, what the binary equivalent to A was, if I remember, I did all that counting, I started out at zero, then we did one, and then we did two, and so on and so forth. Eventually, we got to A, which is 10, and what was the binary equivalent? Do you remember? Look up the video if you have to. I'll, I'll pause while you do that. Okay, A, the way you write an A in binary is this. That's a 10 decimal, correct? 
All right? That's 8 plus 2 gives us 10. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This looks a lot like this. Does it not? Does that make sense? Hmm, I wonder. Huh, what do we do? We got a B here. What's B in, uh, in, in binary? How do I break that up? A, B, so B is 11, right? That's just A plus 1 is B, right? So 11, which would look a lot like this, except we need to add a 1 right here. So 1, 0, 1, 1. That's our B, right? B hex, 1, 0, 1, 1 binary. But wait a minute, wait a minute. What does this look like? What is this? Hey, look at that! <laughs> do you see? Do you see the pattern here? All right, I didn't need to go through all this work going to decimal and then from decimal to hex and oh, that's just nasty. Forget all that. In fact, let's uh, that's just cluttering up our screen, isn't it? We're taking up look at all this real estate. I'm just wasting on your computer screen. You should be ashamed and and never watch my videos ever any anymore to learn this stuff. But here we go. All I had to do was say, well. You know, four binary digits roll up like a hexadecimal single digit. Okay, same thing here. So I just have to group them up into groups of four and then get their hexadecimal equivalent by saying, well, what is this in hex? Well, that's a B and that's an A, so on and so forth. Let's let's do a really big, ugly number. All right, let's, let's, let's get a really large binary number up here. This is going to be so big. All right. Yeah, this is looking good. Do you notice I'm kind of spacing them out in groups of four? <laughs> maybe that's some foreshadowing. Oh, maybe I'm just breaking the rules. Who knows? There we go. And I don't know. Let's. There we go. So I, I have already cheated here. The first thing you need to do when converting a binary number to a hexadecimal number is, well, again, it takes four binary digits to roll up to like a single hexadecimal digit does. So you, all we have to do is group them up in groups of four. And then these guys, if you think of them as mini odometers, they represent one hexadecimal digit. So what is this, this binary value? Well, that's an eight plus two is a 10, which we learned is an A. And then this is a seven, or <laughs> it is a seven, sorry. It's four plus two plus one. That's seven, okay, there's seven. That is not decimal number, that's a hexadecimal. Remember, we're thinking hexadecimal. What is this? This is, well, notice everything's turned on in here. I actually cheated here. Everything's turned on, so you should immediately think, oh, that's the largest binary value I can get out of four digits, which would be the largest hexadecimal value I could get, which would be an F. Okay, and then this is a, a four plus a one, that's a five. And then this is a eight plus a one, which is a nine. And then this looks like it's just a one. And then we have 8 plus 2 is 10, plus another one is 11, which is B in hex. Look how easy that was to convert from binary to hex. Are you seeing it now? Can you see why in programming languages the compilers like us to type in the hexadecimal version of a number instead of typing in all this long binary 10100110? One zero, one zero, zero, one, 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 zero. Instead, we, in programming languages, we abstract away and we type in the hex hexadecimal value. Okay, and, and it's nice because they cleanly convert. If I have a hexadecimal nine, then you can immediately or hopefully quickly see the bits in your head. Okay, you need to get used to that. In fact, it's so important. Let me just draw it out one more time. Let's count in binary, but now I'm going to actually start with four digits. Do you remember what four digits make? I said eight digits are a byte, and I believe I've told you what four digits are. We cut an eight in half, and that gives us a nibble. Okay, so that's zero, and that's one, and this is two. Can you see the odometer rolling up? Here's a three, here's a four. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and write the rest of them out so you don't have to watch, but I hope you, hope you get the idea here. Okay, there you go. There's all me counting zero to 15. All the digits turn on here, and if I add one more, we'll roll over. We'll will overflow. I've talked about that before. Now let's do the hexadecimal values right next to them. So let me, uh, well, that's a zero. This is a one. This is a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Feeling like I'm getting carpal tunnel in my hand here. <laughs> oh, okay. Eight, nine, A, 
B C D E F. Okay. <sighs> to become an excellent computer scientist or just a mathematician in general, memorize this pattern and don't just sit down and try to memorize it. That's going to, oh, what a headache. You need to work the numbers back and forth. Do a zillion conversions between bi binary, decimal, hex, binary, decimal, hex, hex, decimal, hex, binary, hex. Oh, back and forth, back and forth. Do tons of them. And you'll get used to what numbers represent what. Don't just try to sit here and try to memorize ones and zeros. I remember one time watching The Matrix with my wife and seeing all the numbers go down on the movie. They show you The Matrix and numbers and symbols. And, and she looks at me, because she knew I was a computer scientist. She looked at me and said, hey, hey, do you understand what that means? And I was like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, I was just trying to impress her. We were newlyweds at the time. Anyway. Okay, uh, good. I think that's it. So... One hexadecimal digit represents four binary digits, and it's nice. We get this nice pairing. We could, if we didn't want to, if we want to abstract away even more, we could go to base, I don't know, base 32. Let's add another one in there. And so it would be E, F, G, H, I, J, K, yada, yada, yada. And, um, but we don't. <laughs> we stop at base 16. A, A, B, C, D, E, F, I guess, is hard enough to keep track of. So there you go. Converting from... Binary to hexadecimal, and and vice versa. If I gave you a hexadecimal number, then you could easily convert it to binary.